Hey guys, Stealth here. Today we're going to be playing the second Korean War campaign. This is the campaign that just got launched through the second DLC for Wargame Red Dragon. And according to the difficulty menu, this is going to be a very hard campaign. There's a lot of countries involved in this campaign. US, West Germany, France, Anzac, Canada, Japan, South Korea, no Britain, which is interesting, North Korea, China and Russia. So a lot of things to do here. Let's have a look. Skip the cinematics a bit. Okay, we're going to be jumping into this campaign right away. I have to say I already played a couple of these battles yesterday, so I do know what I can expect and how I can uh, approach it. Right now we have to defend the USS Enterprise. This aircraft carrier has been attacked by an Alpha class submarine and it has just been hit by a torpedo. They have Russian ships advancing, their engines have been hit, they cannot avoid a fight. They cannot get out, which means that we have to defend the Enterprise. Now the Enterprise is a crucial aircraft carrier. If you lose this unit, you lose a very valuable mobile airfield with a lot of special air wings they have. So it's going to be essential that we keep this one. Now it says a special rule, the Enterprise cannot escape from combat, which means we cannot retreat. It will be destroyed in case of total defeat. So it means also that any other result than a total defeat, say a draw, would be okay. We don't have to win the battle. Admiral Winfield from Pacific Command is telling us that the Enterprise must be saved. We have to face the coming battle. It will be a very difficult fight. If the carrier survives, you'll be allowed to retreat it and send Japanese squadrons and new aircraft in support. Which is good. As you can see, we have some squadrons which we could call in if the aircraft carrier makes it out. But right now, we just have to defend. We cannot move any other units. So let's see what we're going to be up against. I have the USS Enterprise. Now you're never going to see this unit. But what we actually will see is its escorts, which is eight Holliver Hazard Perrys, one Congo, a couple of Chamseries, a couple of Pegasus, and some LCUs. We have the Black Knights. This is the Tomcat Squadron. And we have the Checkmates. These are anti-ship uh, aircraft, such as the FA-18E Hornet 3, or Super Hornet. I only get three of those. They carry two harpoon missiles, so they could be used against other ships. However, if you look on the right side, the Russians are going to be coming at us with MiG-31Ms. Now these are the direct counterparts to the Tomcats. These have 11,900 meter range. These 11,900 as well. So attacking with Super Hornets is going to be pretty difficult. Moreover, we have 80 naval units, sorry, 38 naval units, they have 60. They have 8 Nagines, armed with anti-ship missiles, 12 Komars, again, anti-ship missiles, helicopters, Sovramanis, 4 of these, no less, where we only have 1 Congo, 14 Charantial 3s, these all pack 4 missiles, which means that they can spam missiles if they think all attack at once, a couple of Munas, and a couple of SU-27Ks with anti-ship missiles. We can use a lot of sectors. They are going to be coming in from Naval Sectors Mike and November. We have Naval Sectors Delta, Charlie, Lima and Juliet. And this is where I'm going to set up. In this battle I'm going to not attack. I'm going to purely defend. Because against such a large wave of anti-ship missiles it's going to be difficult to defend. Or sorry, difficult to attack. So, start with a Congo. This is going to be the mainstay of my defense. Congos, of course, have very good sea whiz and defensive missiles, which are pretty accurate, 50%. So we can use all of these weapon systems to defend our fleet. All of our hazard parries. And we're going to spend the rest on Chamseries. These ships are mainly just floating sea whiz batteries, which means that they can take out most missiles with their Sea Vulcan sea whiz. They're good, but they're not perfect. 
So you want to spam these and make sure that you have a decent defensive force around your group. Otherwise they will get destroyed. Never send these ships out alone. Not even to attack a helicopter because they're too valuable and too vulnerable. So this is my fleet right now. Two Oliver Superiors, one Congo and a wave of Chamseries around it. And I'm just going to sit and wait. I'm just going to turtle up and any points I get I'm going to spend on buying more Chamseries, an LCU for repairs and possibly in the end game Super Hornets. Now what I also want to do is set these things under a hotkey. I want to have my Congo under a hotkey and I want to have my Perry under a hotkey. I disable the harpoons on all of these. Reason is that these ships will fire harpoons when anything comes into an 8 km range. And this means that if they do, they're going to start firing harpoons one by one, which is the least effective solution I've ever seen. So make sure you disable those weapon systems and you only enable them manually when you have a target in range. Calling in some more Chamseries now. This is my last Chamseree I can call in. So far, I don't know where the enemy is. The only thing I know is that they've captured Naval Sector and Mike and uh, November and that they're going to be coming. They have 8 points income, probably a bit more because they have decent morale. And here is our first contender, a Sovereign Many class. Now, a word about the Sovereign Many, you've probably seen these things before. Very good guns on them, 5 km range, 8 anti-ship missiles, they fire these 2 at a time. Which means that once these things are done, they're going to come in close for the guns. And two ship missiles should be an easy prey for my Chamseries, the Congos and the Oliver Hazard Perry. As you can see, these things are getting destroyed. But the splash damage from these have even damaged my Chamserie. Here's two more. Took out these. And we already lost one Chamserie. Another ship missile coming in. From northeast we have a Tarantula. Just look at the combined force of these things. It seems that they're only coming in from the right side now. So I want these Chamseries to start relocating. I won't need a defense on my left flank. I can call in another Oliver Hazard Perry. The more guns the merrier, basically. As you can see the Sovereign Many fired all of its ASMs. So now it's coming for me. And I want this thing to be in range before I'm going to start taking it out. Here's another Oliver Hazard Perry, a hotkey that thing. Now, these anti-ship missiles from the Oliver Hazard Perrys are fired one by one. The Congo fires a salvo of four. The Sovereign Many doesn't appear to have any escorts, so I'm going to turn on all of these anti-ship missiles. And this should help with destroying the Congo before it starts to take out too many Chamseries. Hit one missile, two. He managed to defend himself a little bit. Another missile hit. Time to call in an LCU to make sure we can resupply all of these Toma or Tomahawks. Harpoons, sorry. Sovereign Mini is almost out. Disable all the harpoons because I got it. That's 500 points down. Now the one thing I lost is a Chamserie and I have a couple of heavily wounded Chamseries surrounding my fleet. The Congo Oliver Hazard Perrys are not damaged. And this is great news because this means they are still very effective and at no risk of being destroyed. Call in another SCU. This Najin is in range. So let's uh, bundle up on ATGMs, sorry, ASMs, and go after this thing. It probably already fired its Termit missiles, otherwise, it would be firing them now. So I think this thing's empty and coming in for his gun. 
He has a range of 4,300 meters on the gun. My Congo has, sorry, this is my Oliver Perry, the range of 3 kilometers, and the Congo with a range of 6. So I can at least wound him a little before I go after him with ASMs. My aim is now to panic him, and this way he is less effective with his Sea Whiz. Okay, this is troubling. SU-27Ks. Let's hope none of these hit. Yeah, I lost two Chamseries. And an Oliver Hazard Perry got hit. So redistribute these Chamseries. As you can see, now we've got Comars coming at me. Activate the Harpoons. Keep in mind, Harpoons cannot attack Rivercraft. These little bastards are riverine boats, which means they cannot be targeted by anti-ship missiles. If you want to take out those bastards, you're going to have to do it with the gun. That's another Comar down. So far we've taken out a Nogene, we've taken out one Comar, and we've taken out a Sovereign Many. We've lost a couple of Chamseries, but we still have five of these left. So we seem to be doing okay. Speed this up and see when another capital ship's gonna come in. I now have a 180 points. I can use this to call in a Super Hornet, but they only carry two missiles. Instead, it is safer to call in another Oliver Hazard Perry. Because these ships are much more valuable right now in the defense than those Super Hornets can be on the offense. <coughs> okay, we have some more fire coming in here. I'm not sure I can attack those. No, they don't have a line of sight on them. Hotkey my other parry. They have a decent fleet here. A couple of Najins, a couple of Tarantules. But it seems that they're just stalling here. I'm not sure why. Okay, we're gonna take fire from Tarantules. These carry four missiles each, fired in bursts of two. As you can see, we're putting up a wall of lead. Four missiles down. They're probably going to do that again. And they have a Muna, which means that they can keep firing ASMs at me. And they are, because they have a large fleet. Now, Tarantules have a decent defense. They got good Sea Whiz, which means they're harder to kill with anti ship missiles. Nogines have medium Sea Whiz. Which means that they're a lot easier to kill with ASMs. Now, let's see. I might be able to capture or kill this Nogin. If only my ships were in visual range, with their, which they're not. As in, I have two parries here. This one and this one, and they're hiding behind the island. They're just being fire support, really, for anything that's out here. But they cannot use the harpoons because they simply cannot see the targets. I'm going to enable the harpoons on all of my ships, just to start spamming ASMs of my own. Let's call in some more LCUs to keep all of these ships supplied. Blow up one Najin. Disable all the harpoons again. Hit another Najin twice. Now, as you can see, I'm not trying to kill these units aggressively by moving my entire fleet out because they have way more anti ship missiles than I do. Instead, I'm just trying to survive here. Have all of these Comars do what they do fire the anti ship missiles, take those out and make work of them next turn. Congo 
Congo is firing ASMs again. Let's hope he manages to take out any of these ships. Took out a Komar, but that was with guns. Yep, that's another ship down. Looks like one of these things got hit. Yeah, Chamsuri got destroyed. Disable the harpoons, wait for them to all be refilled. Now, in my opinion, the best course of action for the Russians would have been to come at me with a large fleet. Come at me with all of these ships at the same time. Then uh, enable all of the anti-ship missiles and that way deploy such a large anti-ship missile wave that you would slowly wear me down. That's how I would tackle this naval battle as I, if I was playing that side. Most of these LCUs are empty, which is unfortunate. Lost another Chamsuri. But they're losing anti-ship missile launcher platforms. Such as in the Najins, their Komars. And hopefully I can take out as many of these as possible. That's my aim right now. Fortunately, the weapon system from the Congo is rebooting, which means it cannot fire any anti ship missiles right now. Or anything else for that matter. Managed to score another hit on this Nogen. Took out another Komar here. I really would like to get these ships out of the way. All I'm trying to do is make sure they have less anti-ship platforms than I do next turn and that I'm not losing any ships this turn. Now I have lost a couple of Chamseries but they went down sacrificing themselves for the greater good literally because they managed to keep my other ships alive which is very very valuable because that means that the Congo and the Oliver Hazard Perrys can go again next round. The ship's almost out. He's firing, yeah, there you go. We got six more anti-ship missiles coming in. It'll probably hit something. Yeah, Chamsuri got down. We got 370 points. Let's see what kind of fun stuff we can do with that. We might be able to destroy this Muna, but I know that there's a ship somewhere here. Yeah, they got some ships bunched up. If I can destroy this Muna, that's going to create a tremendous explosion. Try and go for this Muna. Oh, I missed these ships. No hits, unfortunately. Except on my aircraft, which are both alive, but damaged. At this point I only got one, no, two Chemsurais left. So the rest of my units are just going to have to fend for themselves. And I only got three minutes to do that, so I should be okay. <coughs> I am hoping that at least one of these ships is going to come a little closer, so that I can do another sweep with my ASMs. Oh, here we go. Hopefully, yeah, took a 165 point SU-27K. And what I want to try to do is call in a Tomcat, have it circle over my own lines, and try to lure in some of those air superiority fighters, those MiG-31s. 
Maybe some of my ships can take out one or two of those planes. More ASMs coming in. They seem to have an endless supply. Which is true, because they have a couple of Mooners behind them. Got a Tomcat. Tomcat's actually in the right place, right time. Fire some missiles at their ships. Sorry, these aircraft. Tomcat got destroyed by the SU-27Ks. Now I want to have one ASM helicopter out here. These are excellent spotters. And I want to see if I can get some more shots in on any of these ships. Okay, we lost another unit. We lost another Chamzuri. 30 seconds left. Yeah, I'm not going to risk my ships anymore. Or my aircraft. So, quite the intense naval battle, this. Lost quite a bit of ships, but not half as many as they did. Let's see what the scores are. I took out 20 ships versus losing 7 of my own. All I lost were Chamzeris, which are support ships. They lost 7 Ajins, 10 Komars. Now these were the mainstay of their ASM force. Tarantulas are now also very dangerous because they still have a lot of ASMs ready. Took out one SU-27K anti-ship fighter. And I took out one Sovereign So now we can actually start focusing on the attack. We have repelled the Soviet attack, but we're going to do this again next round is basically what he's saying. Washington thinks that this is aggression is a warm up for a full blown invasion of Korea. They're quiet on other theaters. We think this is only a regional conflict, but you're at the forefront. Major Sung at the DMZ says it's quite quiet. So we can do a counter strike right now, but against this many oncoming units, I'm more inclined to defend what I have. And as he's saying here, your sectors give you political points, so as long as they are unchallenged. So instead, I'm going with this suggestion. I'm going to entrench and withstand the shock. Because there is going to be a shock. Now, as you can see, we have a large number of zones. And even naval sectors seem to give some political points. So capturing these naval sectors with some ships would be very helpful. I have Naval Sector Juliet with an escort flotilla. I do know that I have another group of surface ships coming in. Four Utiloys, a couple of Nanushkas and Munas. While in my naval squadron there are Hatsuyukis, again good Siwis, Pohangs, Bake News and LCUs. Instead I'm going to uh, reinforce my fleet here. And this should help with the attack on those Utiloys. I have these frontal zones, and these zones give me the most points right now. Now let's see what they got incoming. They got a tank convoy of cheap Type 59s, artillery convoy, infantry regiment, Yukion Days are marines. These are quite devastating. Infantry regiment of Iglas, Fagots. I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but they're recoilless rifles. RPGs, and some scouts, and an anti-air convoy. So this is a well-rounded battle group, it's not going to be easy to destroy. Although their anti-air is somewhat lacking, they only have Iglas, which are not very good against aircraft, so that might be an option. They will push in to either this zone and reinforce their brothers, or go for Sokcho. Now let's see. Sokcho is a very open map. This means not a lot of opportunity for my forces to really defend themselves, depending on what zone I pick. 
They're going to be coming in from Wonzan, which is the most expensive zone. The only unit I have here to defend myself is an infantry regiment. Now, I do not see these things going toe-to-toe -to -toe with tanks. At all. I have support. Some of it. I have recoilless rifles, but again, these aren't going to make much of a dent in those Type 59s. So instead I'll just give up Sok Cho and focus my defense on this sector, Seul and Crunchon. In Crunchon, let's see what kind of map is this. Another open map. I suspect they're coming in from Kaesong. Which means that this open map is very suitable for ATGMs. Unfortunately, all we got is cheap tanks. But it is a 10 point zone. So I would like to be able to hold it. What I have incoming right here is an anti-air convoy and a tank regiment, T-72s. Now T-72s against old versions of M48 patterns is not going to be pretty. So we either need to make sure that we have a defense against those patterns, sorry, against those T-72s, or we need to get the hell out. They got A-51s, which are cluster bombers. Those are a good complement to the tanks. These can weaken my vehicles and tanks and their T-72Ms can finish them off. What I also have here in Seoul is an infantry regiment. This is a pretty decent map for infantry because I can pull back all the way to Daejeon and put some infantry in here while they come in from Onglin. can also call in some naval units not that many though. They have a Dongay, LCUs, Monitor Zippos, these are nice, they have Napalm. And some of these STRB-90Hs with Hellfires. I can call in some support, an artillery convoy. No seal is a very important zone, I can reinforce this directly through its port, so I want to keep this. I have a recon convoy, and I'm also going to send these to seal. I'm going to pull back my tanks and give them crunch on while I'm setting up a defense in Daejeon. Over here I have an anti-tank convoy. Those can be used to go after the T-72s in a bit. All the way back here I have a special aviation battalion, a couple of helicopters, scout helicopters, seals, recorders rifles and a command chopper. Five initiative points, so let's move these up to J. John as well. I have A37Bs. These are bombers with both cluster bombers and snake eyes. But they only have five initiative points. Which means they can only reach these zones. I'm going to send these to this other airport and assign them here. This is going to be their new home base, and this means that they can start to strike out into those zones so long as I hold this airfield. So this airfield is going to be very, very important for my defense. Finally, I have another group of units right here, an armored regiment with K1s. Those are going to have to back up my infantry regiment right there. I do have a naval escort flotilla on the right side of Seoul. Or sorry, of Busan. And they have another group of marines coming in. They have a yellow sea division coming in. And some airport. Look at all this. This is an important zone. Okay, so I'm going to start to relocate these ships west. It's going to take them a while to get there. I have 20 points. And as you can see, I kept the naval sector of the Enterprise. So I can call in some of these naval task forces. I got the Night Riders. These are tram intruders with anti-ship missiles. I got the Night Hawks. F-18C Hornets. <coughs> these will be very handy against those T-72s. But they're 40 points and I only have 20. I got Bulldogs, Harriers with bombs. And the Rooks, Prowlers. Okay. Cannot call in a lot of those, unfortunately. I can call in another escort flotilla. 
Uh, for 20 points I get anti-ship helicopters, Congos, Pohangs and Donghais. Now this could be a nice counter to this group, but I want to do that with the Enterprise. Because I think that my defense on the ground is going to be way more important. Land forces, I can call in two different groups. I got the 15th Victory Division and the 3rd Lightning Brigade. Now these have a mechanized infantry regiment. But what I'm really looking for is something to stop an oncoming wave of tanks. Which is an attack helicopter squadron with tows and ITs. Or an armor battalion which is way too expensive. Though they do come with K1A1s. The Victory Division has another armored battalion. Again, these cheap cheap tanks. Artillery convoy. Air defense. Infantry regiment. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go with the helicopter squadron. Call those in from these sectors back and send these to the front. So I'm going to stop the video here. The naval battle at least succeeded in defending the Enterprise so long and I have this supporting flotilla now so the next turn and the next video is going to feature another naval battle. I suspect I'm going to be attacked here in Seoul so I'm going to have to be ready for that. Actually send these, these planes forward KF5s, not very good. So let me know what you think of this first part of the campaign. How did I do? Did you manage to survive your naval battle? Did you lose the Enterprise? If yes, what could you have done differently? What could I have done differently? Look forward to hearing from you in the comments, so let me know. If you liked the video, please hit like, and if you want to see the next videos in this video series, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next video.